Well, hello, friends. <clears throat> I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearl of Wisdom. And I'm doing this big smiley face because I want this to be what you see when I do the, uh, the uh, what's the thing, when you, when you watch the video. What's that called? Thumbnail. <laughs> okay, hopefully that did it. They should thumbnail that, right? Yeah. <clears throat> Anyways, we are going to be doing, uh, we're doing a continuing series of trading Eichel to every team. Now, there, I'm, again, I'm Perloism. You're listening to my angel Perloism. Okay. Okay. Um, trading Eichel to every team. And it has been fascinating so far to hear the varied uh, amounts of views on the value of Eichel. It is awesome. I put it on Facebook. Go to my Facebook, uh, search Pearl of Wisdom, Pearls of Wisdom, or NHL Pearls of Wisdom, or something like that on Facebook, and join up there. And uh, you can you can find out my alias, too, if you do that. And then you can follow me and, and, and to all these other places that I go to. And on Facebook, where all the other teams that I kind of talk to them about this sort of thing, Right now, we just did the Detroit Red Wings. I'm having conversations there. They're like, no way. They're not doing it because they're, they would have to give up way too much of what they just built. And I kind of understand that. I, I you know, but um, I'm hearing things like if the offer was Larkin, Zadina, and two firsts, they would say no. I'm not so sure about that. I think Stevie Y is a little smarter than that. Uh, you're, you have those two firsts to get guys like Eichel. And yes, they'll be a little cheaper at first, but Eichel's contract at $10 million for the next six years is freaking gravy. Now, again, we're assuming he comes back from this injury and he's okay, right? He's going to be okay from his injury, which all projections say that he will be, all right? Whether he goes to surgery or however they wish to do it. Buffalo and them are working on however they're going to work on that. And the trade won't happen until that time. All right. So the reason why I did this was I had floods of letters coming in, like from uh, per, uh, Permission Gartwright from uh, Orlando, Florida, saying, uh, you know, I would never trade Bark off for for. There's a good example. Nobody would trade Barkoff for Eichel. Straight up. Straight up, they wouldn't trade Barkoff for Eichel. What do you think? Barkoff for Eichel. I did one in there. And send your letters. We love it. Uh, Guido goes down to the mailroom every day and comes up and brings our letters. And we all do the Pearl Auto dance around the letter table. Pours them all over. And we read them every day. It's fantastic. Anyways, um, yeah, would you do that? I would do that. I'm sorry. I love Barkoff. Does this mean I don't like the player? Of course not. I love the player. But it's Jack freaking Eichel, a healthy Jack Eichel. Tell me what you think of a healthy Jack Eichel. I think there's a lot of weird perception out there. Analytically, he's a top five player in the league, I would say, somewhere around there. So leave it up to you. Tell me what you think. Let's get to it. We're going to go to a couple teams. A few teams that probably wouldn't be in the race, but we're going to look at them anyways. And then one team that for sure would be in the race. Okay. We're starting with Philadelphia Flyers. Uh, the Philadelphia Flyers, would they be in the race? Okay. The Philadelphia Flyers, if they were to do this, would basically be ringing in a complete rebuild because they would have to give up half their roster. Uh, and I... The thing is, is I don't know if Buffalo would be able to to absorb the contracts that they would be giving back. They might have to add other players into it. They might have to take players back that they might not even want to, to even have a chance at this. But Couturier would be gone, gone, gone. First things first, you're not including Couturier, and I know he's only 28 years old. Now, Buffalo, there's been a lot of talk that are going to be looking at still being competitive now. They're not talking about a burned down rebuild, which makes sense. They've already been doing it for 10 years. <laughs> no, they can't do that. If they were to do this Eichel trade, it's got to be for now and some for later, but a lot of it has to be for now. They got to kind of hope that they can roll the dice, 
Couturier would be a very good guy for that because he's a leader, a great leader. Fantastic to a He's got a selkie trophy. Um, he's great with the team. He's probably the best team player they have besides yeah, Giroux too. But I'm going to tell you now, Philadelphia Flyers fans, and I've had it in your letters, you said, you know, we'll give them Claude Giroux. They're not touching Claude Giroux. 33-year-old aging veteran does not make sense in this deal at all. It's not happening. So, uh, no. It would probably take Konechny, who had a down year. So now you already got, that's $10 million right there. Uh, actually, I wouldn't even say that. It's going to take Joel Farabee. Joel Farabee. It's going to take Katuri Farabee. And I know Philadelphia Flyers fans are cringing right now. And then there's a lot, they'll be saying, well, you know, he's not worth it. Well, yeah, okay, if you don't want him, then you don't want him. I'll tell you what, he's worth Katuri Farabee plus. He's that good. When he was... When he's at healthy and playing at his top level, he's up there with the Matthews and all of those people in McKinnon, guys like that. Those guys are going to cost you a boat load, a boat load. And, uh, you know, you can throw in Morgan. Do those two and then whatever prospects you have. York, uh, first round picks. Yeah, I mean, short of Carter Hart, which just simply this organization has to believe in and can't lose, cannot lose. I mean, you lose Carter Hart, you're right back to square one all over again. Short of Carter Hart, you're going to be losing just about every year. But Couturier, Farabee, York, and Firths, that's what it's going to cost, at least that. And as you do these, you might even say that that might not even be enough. You do, they do have a chance now. You would take, so you got Jack Eichel here. Again, this is not happening until next year. You have Jack Eichel here in between Giroux and Konechny. Farabee's gone. Uh, hopefully, you can pawn off Van Riemsdyk off of people. Hopefully, then you're hoping, hoping Oscar Lindholm comes back and plays better in a less condensed season. Um, hoping that Connor Bunneman can take a spot and uh, all of that. But you're kind of building at the same time here. It's a very difficult trade to make. You got to start building around. You they would you would have to start building around Eichel and uh, growing this team internally as much as you possibly can. Tough, I know. You're sitting there going. Honestly, I think the problem when you're doing this trade is you start to realize what I was saying when we traded Hextall, because I say we, I'm a huge Philadelphia Flyers fan and Oilers fan. It was a mistake. We weren't ready. We didn't have, yeah, okay, we have a better prospect pool than we had before. Oh, I forgot. Uh, oh, Wade Allison. We got Wade Allison to throw up here. I think he's almost close to ready. He's good. He's going to take his time. You can throw him up there. You know, it, we would be okay. I'll tell you what, we would be a way better team with Eichel. And I love Couturier. I love Couturier. But Eichel is Selkie caliber as well, but he can pot 120 points. That's what we're talking about here, Philadelphia Flyers fan. And if you don't believe me, then I guess you don't believe me or whatever. But. Yeah, it's going to take that. And I don't even know if that'll be enough. So Philadelphia might not even be in it, no matter what they try to do. I would really hope that Buffalo understands, the Sabres understand that the value of York. York is a great defenseman. I hate to see him leave this lineup because we don't have much after that to put in here. But if you're going to get an Eichel, that's what you're looking at. So tell me in the comment section what you think about trying to get an Eichel. I've heard some offers like Giroux, um, you know, putting Hayes in there. I mean, Hayes, unfortunately, his value is higher than his, is lower than his contract right now. I, I'm not interested if I'm Buffalo. Um, you know, Gosh to Spear, nobody wants Gosh to Spear right now. I know he had a better year, but he's going to have to prove it a lot more to be even in an, in the conversation. He, he, you could maybe throw him in you know, to something like this. If you have like tons of prospects, uh, a, a team might take a look-see or something like that, but really highly unlikely Gosh to Spear is going to be anywhere near that. 
All right, let's go to the Calgary Flames. Calgary Flames have been all over the rumor mill on Eichel. All right, and then this is all early stuff here because Eichel's not going to be ready till next year sometime. But they've been all over it, okay? So that's wonderful. However, when we look at the roster, is it reasonable? The, the main value right now with Calgary is possibly the perception is that they are not going to be good for a while. So their first round picks would be huge. And the 2022 and the 2023 draft looks fantastic, especially 2022-23 draft, 2021-22 draft looks fantastic. Um, but you got Savoy, Wright, and then, of course, Bedard is in there, and the that Russian kid. Superstars are available two years from now. Not this year, not next year, but the year after. Wright, not a superstar, but a huge star, big star. So that would be the biggest value that Calgary has. So basically what Calgary would be doing, and Calgary is a team to do this sort of thing, is to go for the home run. Uh, they would have to probably include, I mean, they would try to trade, Mo trade Monaghan in this deal, but his value is so low right now, I don't think it's going to move the meter too much for Buffalo. They want Lindholm, and I know you don't want to give him up, but it's going to have to be Lindholm, Johnny Goudreau. This is going to be a rip down the, rip down the uh, roster trade. Johnny Goudreau, uh, Elias Lindholm, Youngish guys, Buffalo would be interested in that to a certain degree because they can be competitive now. Um, I want Rasmus Anderson in this deal, even though defense is not the, the biggest thing they need. However, I did a video here just recently. I would highly recommend you go to it. In fact, I'll put it in the comment section uh, about what Buffalo, which direction Buffalo may be going. Um, and, uh, you know, some of the guys that may end up getting traded, not in, not only uh, Eichel. Reinhardt has shown uh, displeasure. However, I think that's probably maybe solvable. Uh, but, and, uh, um, oh, that defenseman for Buffalo, I forget his name. You know, I always forget his name. Ras Ristolainen. Ristolainen has every year, every year, every year. So that this could be a replacement for Ristolainen. I know you're hating it. Rasmus, I don't want to get rid of Anderson. I don't want to move Anderson. But if you're going to get somebody like this, if you're going to get an Eichel, this is the deal you're going to be. Goudreau, Lindholm, Anderson, and Furse. That's it. And that may not do it. So if you're out on that, then you're out on that. But you're not getting Eichel. So I'll just move on from that because honestly, I highly, I find it highly unlikely that Calgary would have the guns to be able to pull this deal off. I don't even know if that's going to make it. And they don't have enough prospect, uh, high end prospects to include to move the meter eater either. They have some decent prospects. Connor Zari looks, is looking pretty good. Uh, Jacob Pelche is putting up good numbers in the queue, but he's very small iffy whether he's going to be able to translate into the NHL uh, yeah not huge prospects at all so it kind of puts them out so we'll move on to a team that maybe a, I know will be scrambling to try to ha make it happen Nashville Predators the Nashville Predators would probably be, be scrambling here to get this done um, but again do they have the pieces? I mean, this this would be definitely a sign of a rebuild here because it's going to take Tolvin in. Uh, you've got to hope the heck they like Ryan Johansson. I mean, I like Ryan Johansson in a lot of ways. He's, a, he's got um, some decent two-way, big-size center. He just doesn't put up enough points for a first, over, for, for number one centerman. He's got to play on your number two line, and he's making a lot of money at that. So... Um, but L.A. Tolvanen, Philip Forsberg, I mean, you're going to have to throw everything at this. Everything they Nashville would have to throw everything they got. Short of Roman Josie, who, you know, at this point, you might even consider that. 
it wouldn't be straight across either. You'd probably have to add even more. Even though he was a Norse Trophy winner, he's 30 years old. How many Norses do you do? How many Nor? How many people? How many players win Norses past 30? Not too many. It starts to dip a little bit here. He's young enough, but uh, what's what's he signed for? How many years? 2028. He's a UFA. Is Buffalo going to be looking at something like that? I don't even think he'd be part of the equation, to tell you the honest truth, but you definitely have to add to it. As far as uh, Dante Fabro would have to be part of the deal, just take whatever prospects you have, throw them in the middle of the table and say, please, 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 and then build around Eichel. And your first, all of that stuff like that. First round, two first round picks. If they were to make this deal, Nashville would suck for the next couple of years. So they would have to build around Eichel without first round picks, high first round picks, two, two of them anyways, and not much to build around. They'd have to pretty much sign free agents to work around Eichel and uh, you know, hope you can build that way and then hope you get really lucky with your seconds and stuff like that. So it's not a likely scenario, I, especially in a market like Nashville where they can't really afford to go in a deep rebuild. This is one of the teams where if they were to make this deal, they would really be going into a deep rebuild. I would say Calgary, too, would be going into a deep rebuild if they picked up somebody like Eichel and then they decided to build around them. The other thing yeah, they'd have to look at is, is does you know Eichel, Eichel's already had a tough, career so far in Buffalo. Is it really fair to bring a guy over there to be in a deep rebuild again? It may not work very well. So I would say that they're probably out. Uh, now to a team that will be in, would be in on this. I don't know how far they would go because it would be a difficult procedure. Um, they may have enough to hold on to, to be able to be very successful, one thing for sure, this is the Minnesota Wild. One thing for sure, they would have. I I don't do this deal if I give up Capri if I have to give up Kaprizov myself. Um, not because I think Kaprizov is better than Eichel. I don't. I think Eichel again. I think he's a fantastic player. Don't get me wrong. In the Panarin mold, somewhere around there. Do I think Eichel's better than Panarin? Yes, I do. Um, so. It's just that Minnesota would have to, if Minnesota gave up Kaprizov as well, it would be their biggest, it would take away their biggest power move as far as staying as a great organization. Um, Kaprizov and Eichel together would be the reason why you'd be doing this. Um, you could. Minnesota could is can grow into a great team without Eichel. They could grow into a superpower team with Eichel and Kaprizov. You see what I'm saying here? Um, now you're going to have to pay Kaprizov. A lot of people I'm hearing is saying, "Well, you know, he's too expensive at 10 million." No, he's not. 10 million dollars. That's one of the biggest great. That's one of the biggest draws of this deal is that it's one of the few contracts Buffalo nailed really well. At ten million dollars for the next six years, I mean, four years from now, that ten million dollar contract is going to look absolutely beautiful. So that's not an issue here. Um, I think it will cost you Joel Erickson Eck, who, if you're a Minnesota fan, I will shout out to you that I agree he's way better. Um, I've been talking about Eck for like three years now, saying don't worry, he's going to be very, very, very good in the. Uh, Miku Koivu type vein with possibly more up offensive upside. So he would definitely be in it. I would be, I wouldn't do this deal. If you're not going to give, if, if Kaprizov's out of the deal, I'm getting Jordan Greenway all day, all day, all day. Uh, Greenway is like one of the top of my list. I love this guy. Absolutely love this guy. Um, he's going to be great. So Erickson, Eck, Greenway, if Buffalo sees the value in these players like I do, you might you don't you won't have to give up Fiala. And I love Fiala. So you keep Fiala, you keep Eric Kaprizov, you have a superstar center, and here's the next thing. 
if we're doing this deal, and this could be the thing that gives Minnesota the bit, one of the biggest edges, I want Marco Rossi. Why? Because he played with Jack Quinn. And uh, we have, and Buffalo has Jack Quinn. Marco Rossi, Greenway, Erickson Eck, and uh, who else did I say? Sorry, Erickson Eck, Greenway, Marco Rossi. There was somebody else. Uh, you probably would have to throw in some uh, prospects such as, and I love this guy too, Ryan O'Rourke. Uh, Merit Kuznidinov, who I love, love, love. Man, they've done a great job of drafting here ever since uh, Garen turned things around. Um, Vladislav first off has put on some fantastic numbers in college since coming over to Russia. Not only that, I love guys that do that, that come over from Russia and go to college to give themselves the greatest edge to get into the lineup. Uh, so, yeah, they got some fantastic prospects there. Minnesota could make this deal and still have a lot left over. But Marco Rossi, and I know he was injured. I'm, from all accounts I hear, he's going to be fine. Erickson Eck, Greenway, Ryan O'Rourke, and let's hope that somebody doesn't add more and more and more to this. Tell me what you think, Minnesota. Um, everybody I've done this with now, I get backlash from because they're like, they don't, uh, Eichel's not worth that. Uh, Eichel's overrated. They have cancer in the room. He's not a cancer in the room, boys and girls. He's not a cancer in the room. There's nothing to give us that indication whatsoever that he's a cancer in the room. The fact that he was uh, upset about um, the their losses and all of that sort of thing, whatever. You're supposed to be. In that organization, if you're not upset, I don't want you. Seriously, I don't want you if you're not upset. Why would I want you if you're not upset that you lost for the last six years? Like, come on. The O'Reilly trade was absolutely ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. The guy comes out and says this, play, this team needs a culture change and they trade him. He's right. Anyways, that's my 442. Have a great day, everybody. Lots of love to you. Oh, yeah, hit the subscribe and the bell. Try that out. It's fun. Okay, bye.